Okay, so now we're going to look at Chapter 48, Part 5, Acquired Defects. We're going to look at Le Cave Parthes disease, pathophysiology, it's an aseptic necrosis of the femoral head, self-limiting, idiopathic, occurs in children 2 to 12 years of age, most common in white males 4 to 8 years of age. In 10% of the cases there is bilateral hip involvement, and in most cases there is a delayed bone age. The cause of the necrosis is related to disturbed circulation to the femoral head with ischemic aseptic necrosis. So some clinical manifestations include insidious onsets, possible history of a limp, soreness, or stiffness. They have limited range of motion and a, maybe a vague history of trauma. Pain and limp are the most evident on arising and at the end of activity. It's diagnosed from the history and findings on radiographs and um, MRIs. Look at box 48-7 on page 1554 of your textbook. After resolution, the femoral head may be normal or have severe alteration. Okay, so let's talk about therapeutic management. Treatment goal is to keep the head of the femur in the cetabulum. Containment with various appliances and devices. They need rest and no weight bearing initially. We may use non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, surgery and or home traction in some cases is used and then I want you to look at family centered care box on page 1555 of your textbook. Okay so let's look at slip capital femoral epiphysis also known as coxavera. It's a spontaneous displacement of the proximal femoral epiphysis in a posterior inferior direction. Develops most frequently shortly before the onset of puberty usually between the ages of 9 and 16. Uh, 40 to 60 percent of the cases have bilateral involvement. Look at box 48-8 on page 1555 of your textbook. Kyphosis. Abnormally increased convex angulation in the curvature of the thoracic spine. Most common form is postural. Can result from tuberculosis, arthritis, osteodystrophy, or compression fracture. Lordosis, accentuation of the cervical or lumbar curvature beyond physiologic limits, may be idiopathic or secondary complication of trauma, may occur with flexion contractures of the hip or congenital dislocated hip. In obese children, it is caused by alteration in the center of gravity by abdominal fat. Scoliosis, most common spinal deformity. There is a complex spinal deformity in three planes. The lateral curvature, spinal rotation that causes rib asymmetry, thoracic hypokyphosis. It may be congenital or developed during childhood. Multiple potential causes are mostly idiopathic generally becomes noticeable after pre-adolescent growth spurt, and clothes may be ill-fitting. School screening um, still tends to be a controversial issue. I do remember getting screened for this in school when I went to school years and years and years ago. Diagnosis, um, usually they do a standing radiographs to determine the degree of the curvature. You'll have uh, asymmetry of the shoulder height, the scapular or flank shape, or hip height. In addition to primary curve, you'll have compensatory curve, often present to align the head with the gluteal cleft. So therapeutic management. It's a team approach to treatment. Curves of less than 25 degrees are considered to be mild and only require observation during growth. Then we have the bracing approach. It's the most commonly desired form of treatment. However, it does not cure scoliosis. It just slows the progression of the curvature to allow for skeletal growth and maturity. The Boston and Wilmington are the two most commonly used braces. We have exercises that are beneficial when used in combination with bracing to strengthen the spinal and abdominal muscles to provide better support. Then we have the surgical intervention for severe curvatures. That's usually greater 
higher than 45 degrees, and it's using instrumentation and fusion, such as Cottrell Doboset instrumentation is a newer form of spinal instrumentation, which requires post-operative immobilization with a custom-fitted plastic jacket. Okay, so we also had the Lukey rods uh, provides segmental stability. The patient can be mobile within a few days of surgery. Does not require post-operative immobilization, although a higher risk of nerve damage is associated with this surgery. Let's discuss care management. There will be concerns of body image related to the deformity. There's going to be concerns of prolonged treatment of condition. Preoperative care typically includes a radiographic series pulmonary function test, labs, that which will include the PT, PTT, and platelets, urine studies, and electrolyte levels. There is consideration of potential for blood transfusions. Adolescents may consider autologous transfusion in preparation, and adequate pre-op teaching will be needed. Post-operative care includes typical post-op nursing care in addition to careful neurological assessments. IV opioids will typically be administered on a routine schedule unless the child is able to understand the concept of a PCA, which would be recommended over the scheduled doses if possible. The patient will begin ambulation as soon as possible. Self-care and participation in care is highly encouraged. Family issues include encouraging the family to become involved in the patient's care and referral to the National Scoliosis Foundation. This concludes Chapter 48, Part 5.